Hey, it's James here from goodguitarist.com and today I want to show you something that it might be a little counterintuitive for some people because I'm sure you've heard and I believe this as well that we need to be very deliberate in our practice. You know, we need to be focused in an environment with no distractions. We need to put a hundred percent of our concentration into practicing guitar in order to make the most of it and you know to get better faster. However, to play devil's advocate here, a lot of what it means and what it takes to be proficient at guitar involves repetitive motions, doing the same thing over and over again and building those skills and techniques into your muscle memory. And dare I say it's actually beneficial to practice doing these things without focusing on them because it makes them automatic. So what I propose to you today are some exercises that once you get over the initial hump of learning them, you can do them without thinking. You know, they're all very simple, easy to instantly memorize. And the average episode of a show is what, like 22 minutes? So you get 22 minutes of practicing, of building your muscle memory for free, basically. Our first exercise is just two notes. We're gonna put our index finger on any note. I'm gonna pick the fifth fret of the G string and we play a downstroke. And then we put any other finger. I'm gonna do my middle finger, just one fret above it and play an upstroke. And we go back and forth between those two notes, going down, up, being sure to leave our index down the entire time. So that's really simple. And you can do this with any combination of fingers. A really good one, if you find you're having trouble getting control of your ring finger, is to go between middle and ring. You know, you can do that on any two adjacent frets. You know, and since those ones share a tendon, it's really important to work on them, you know, and make them independent of each other. And I would have my index down too, even when I'm going middle ring. And once you get comfortable with it, you can start doing it on a few strings in a row. You know, like you could start at the bottom here. And just do it on every string. You know, the beauty of this one is that you can make it as simple or as complicated as you like. You don't have to read a bunch of tab and get the whole thing correct. You know, you just need to think about which fingers you're using and which strings, you know. You, to make it a complete exercise, you go up and down each string with each finger combination. Like that's a really simple way to do it, you know, going all the way up and then going backwards. You know, then you do index to ring. And you just go through each combination. Index middle, index ring, index pinky. Middle ring, middle pinky, ring pinky. That would be every combination that you could do. And you just go up and down all the strings. And all of a sudden, this is like a crazy exercise. But it's not something that you have to memorize the, like, the tab of. You just have to think about those combinations. You know, think about it in like a logical kind of common sense way. Now, the second exercise, once again, it's super simple. All these exercises are because the whole point is to work out these particular finger motions that we come across all the time in the songs that we love to play. And, you know, this next one occurs in a ton of riffs, like How Many More Times by Led Zeppelin, Tore Down by Freddie King, Crossroads by Cream. It's all based on two interval shapes, the fifth and the octave. So to start, I'm going to put my index on the fifth fret of the thickest string. That's the note A, if you're curious. And then I'm going to put my ring finger on the next string at the seventh fret. And if you've ever learned any easy electric guitar songs, you probably recognize this as the power chord. But we're going to spice it up and incorporate a bit of picking into it. We're going to pick the thickest string with a downstroke, and then the next string with an upstroke. So downstroke upstroke and I don't want you to hold the shape I actually want you to teeter-totter between the two applying pressure to the note that you're picking and just letting your finger up off of the other one like don't uh, remove it just kind of let it up you know and you just teeter-totter as you pick go pick between the two and you know this may seem like a little insignificant minuscule motion but to be able to release notes cleanly so that they don't go like this 
or doing the opposite so that you're just holding them down the whole time and they end up kind of bleeding together. This is one of those things that, you know, people don't really talk about too much, but everybody who sounds good just automatically does it, you know, and this is how we're going to get that skill by teetering between the two and just lifting our finger a little bit, you know, just releasing a little bit of the pressure without lifting our finger completely off the string. We can do it just like that. Keep it simple. That interval is the fifth. One, two, three, four, five. You know, our index plays the root and our ring finger's playing the fifth. Or we can move our ring finger to the next string, also on the seventh fret. And that'll give us the octave interval, you know, from our index to our ring. And this is a really important shape. Two frets higher, two strings higher, the octave. And we're gonna do the same exercise. And you might notice the picking is a little bit more difficult here because we're skipping a string. And that's what we're gonna get used to, you know? If you just learn a song that has that motion once and you just practice the whole song, you end up practicing that motion two times or something. Whereas if you do it over and over again, you're gonna get used to string skipping, right? So that's why we're being so repetitive. We're watching an episode of our favorite show, 22 minutes of string skipping. You know, but, but start with the fifth first, just going to the next string. And then once you're ready, you move on to the octave. And finally, you can go between the two. You can go fifth, octave. And that's, a, like I said, a really important motion for like, you know, for a bunch of different tunes that have like really cool uh, riffs in them. Anyways, our third exercise, and this one is going to be for those of you in like the late beginner to intermediate stages. I don't even know what those words mean at this point, like what's beginner, but you know, for those of you with a little bit of experience, we're going to practice hammer-ons and pull-offs along a single string. We'll start with our index finger. I'm going to do the D string here at the fifth fret. We pluck the string and then we hammer to our middle finger. We pluck it again, we hammer to our ring. We pluck it again and we hammer one more time to our pinky. And we want to make sure that our posture is good, that our fingertips are hitting the strings, you know. I find when you tilt the guitar neck up, it really takes a lot of the pressure off your wrist. If it's down like this, you're playing like slash. I don't know how that guy does it. He must have iron tendons. But you know, for most people, doing a little upward, bringing the guitar closer to your face, makes it a lot easier. Because you don't want to mess around with hammer-ons. You know, you want to make sure that your technique and posture is solid so that it feels good. And like I said before, you focus on these for a while. You know, maybe you practice these deliberately for a month. But after that, this exercise is completely brainless. You just go like hammer, hammer, hammer. And you get to the top and then you pull off. Pluck, pull off. Pluck, pull off. Pluck, pull off. And it's that simple, you know. And you want to listen and make sure that your volume's consistent. You know, go slow, really slow and even. Go a little bit quicker, you know, and just kind of make sure that your volume's consistent, that it feels good. And you can do this anywhere on the fretboard. You know, practice doing it really low where the frets are wider. Practice doing it higher where the frets are closer together. You can do it on any string. And, you know, once you get a little bit better, you can even do it on each string in a single position and turn it into a bigger exercise, you know. And just kind of go up the whole string all the way to the top and then come back. And like all these exercises that I've shown you, they start with just a simple two finger thing, but they can all be expanded into massive exercises that are gonna be really comprehensive. You know, the logic behind them is easy enough and you've probably already memorized the basic version of each of these. You know, just like how a basketball player keeps throwing the same free throw over and over again to practice. You know, it's, it's fine to do something more complicated, but sometimes it's good to just keep doing the same simple thing and turn off your brain and build up that muscle memory. And I just wanna make it clear that all the exercises we're, dis we're discussing today are not meant to replace deliberate practice, but simply to be a supplement so that you can get in the quantity of practice that you need in order to build up dexterity and master these common guitar motions. I also have free ebooks for rhythm and lead guitar. They're 100% free, no strings attached. I'm going to put a link into the corner for those. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Otherwise, have a fun time practicing and I'll see you soon.